Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Ulysses S. Grant, Part 8, Union Victory in the U.S. Civil War in 1865. We stopped last time in 1864. General Union General William Tecumseh Sherman was had taken Atlanta, and now he was on his famous march to the sea. And Sherman said, quote, I can make the march and make Georgia howl. Grant wanted to recruit the maximum number of black soldiers to be armed and with Sherman on his march to the sea. Grant decided to suspend prisoner exchanges to prevent the South from getting more troops. Julia's father was ill, Colonel Dent. Um, Grant invited him to live with them. Julia's brother, John, was in the Confederate Army, and he was captured. Grant made very little effort to free him. However, he relented, and uh, Julia's brother, John, was released in March of 1865. Grant wrote letters to his children, lecturing them about spelling and urging them to use a dictionary. One of the issues was whether soldiers in the field should have the right to vote. Because the election of 1864 was coming, Grant said yes. However, he himself was unable to vote because Illinois had no absentee voting law. Grant allowed Delaware Delaware soldiers to return home to vote since it wasn't too far away. In the election, President Lincoln won against George McClellan. 78% of the Union soldiers voted for Lincoln. Confederates were disappointed by the election result. Grant visited his new home in Burlington, New Jersey. When he arrived, he did not know which house it was, and the police chief showed him his home. When he arrived home, he had no key and rapped on the door. It was past midnight. Julius said, quote, Is that you, Ulysses? And he answered, Yes, and was admitted to his new home. Grant and his family visited New York City. They saw the Astor House in Manhattan. There was pandemonium wherever Grant went. The public cheered, wanted to see him. He was famous. November 30th was the battle in Franklin, south of Nashville, Tennessee, a Union victory. General Thomas defeated General Hood. There were 7,000 Confederate losses, triple that of Union losses. December 8th, Grant sent, uh, sent a telegram to General Thomas and wanted him to attack Hood. It didn't happen. December 14th, Grant decided to travel to Nashville to relieve Thomas. Then he received the news that Thomas had attacked, and and Grant canceled his Nashville trip. There was victory. Grant's Grant's message to Thomas Thomas was attack till destruction. Hood's army was reduced from 40,000 to 20,000 and had become ineffective and was in disarray. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia was the only powerful Confederate army left. Confederate General Beauregard had a proclamation in the Savannah newspaper urging Georgia citizens to block Sherman's march to the sea. Sherman was demonized in the South by white people, but for black people he was a liberator. 20,000 ex-slaves traveled with Sherman's army. Sherman's army in Georgia lived off the land. They enjoyed sweet potatoes, cornmeal, turkey, chicken, sheep, hogs, and beef. They had with them 5,000 cattle at the beginning of the march. At the end, they had 10,000 cattle. Sherman's army wanted vengeance on South Carolina, the first state to secede. They took Savannah as a Christmas present for President Lincoln. Sherman's nickname in the North was Tecumseh the Great. Grant's focus was to destroy Lee's army of Northern Virginia. One goal was capturing Wilmington, North Carolina, a southern port, This would mean mean less Confederate trade. Confederate troops in North Carolina were going to Georgia. Grant decided to attack Wilmington. On December 24th, the USS Louisiana, loaded with gunpowder, drifted close to Fort Fisher, guarding the mouth of the Cape Fear River near Wilmington, and was intentionally exploded to try to to, uh, destroy the, the fort. But nothing happened. There was no harm. General Butler's plan failed. The Confederates were laughing. There was cannon fire at Fort Fisher. General Butler was supposed to have an infantry attack, but he had cold feet. 
General Grant replaced Butler with General Edward O. C. Ord. January 6, 1865, Fort Fisher fell and Wilmington was shut, shut off. This was the end of the blockade runners bringing, bringing supplies uh, to the Confederacy from overseas. In December of 1864, Grant was tightening the noose around Richmond and he severed southern rail links to isolate the Confederate capital. Before Christmas, Grant had a stomach disorder. He had hemorrhoids. He briefly renounced cigars. Grant said, quote, I know how much there is dependent on me and will prove myself equal to the task. I believe determination can do a great deal to sustain one, and I have that quality certainly to its fullest extent. Grant and Julia were given a fully equipped house in Philadelphia by the grateful citizens there. Generosity for the patriotic hero and his sacrifices. In January, Julia joined Grant at City Point. They were happy together. January 1st, 1865, New Year's Day, Grant ordered a day of peace, no fighting. The previous Thanksgiving in 1864, Union troops had received 80,000 pounds of turkey for Thanksgiving, and General Lee allowed them to eat in peace, and Grant decided to return the gesture and allow the Confederates to enjoy New Year's Day. Start of 1865, Grant had 124,000 troops, Lee 57,000 troops. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia was facing starvation. On January 31st, Grant met with three Confederate peace commissioners at City Point. Grant was cordial and courteous and showed goodwill. Alexander Stevens was charmed by Grant. Grant craved peace. On January 31st, the 13th Amendment was passed by Congress outlawing slavery. President President Lincoln's message to the peace commissioners that his terms were the Union be preserved, slavery would end, and the Confederate Army needed to to disband. This was the end of the peace talks. President Lincoln had a kind attitude toward the Southern people. Uh, General Grant helped solve a a, a Lincoln family problem. Lincoln, Lincoln and Mary's son Robert was being pressured to serve in the Union Army, but Mary was afraid he would get killed. Grant accepted Robert on his staff where he would be out of danger. The Army of Northern Virginia was unraveling. There was desertion. They were hungry. The, the ages of the troops were from 14 to 60. Grant and Julia were at City Point, Virginia. Uh, at one point during this time, the, a Confederate ironclad broke through the river and was expected to fire at City Point. And uh, J- uh, Julius said, quote, Ulysses, what had I better do? And Grant said, quote, Well, the fact is, Julia, you oughtn't to be here. And Julia later wrote, And he had sent for me, mind you. The Confederate legislature in early 1865 passed a bill in which sl- slaves could would be used in the army of the the Confederate Army, and there were one or two black companies who paraded in Richmond. This led to a drop in the price of slaves. In early January, Sherman was ready to have a path of destruction in South Carolina and North Carolina. In January, Sherman had issued Special Order Field Order Number 15 that the Sea Islands, a strip of land in Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida on the coast, would be, the land would be given to landless black families, 40-acre plots for self-governing communities. On February 1st, Sherman began his march through South Carolina and North Carolina. Lee sent troops to fight Sherman, at which weakened the defense of Richmond. Union troops were angry that South Carolina started the war and there was destruction. February 22nd, Confederate, Confederate General Joe Johnston was in charge of North Carolina and South Carolina. February 17th, the Union Army was in Columbia, South Carolina, the capital of that state, and, and, it, w- which, and it was punished. When they departed on February 23rd, much of Columbia was smoking ruins. It had been set fire by Confederate and Union troops. The burning of Columbia was retaliation for the burning of Chambersburg, Pennsylvania by Confederate troops. In Charleston, South Carolina, the 54th Massachusetts Infantry a black regiment sang John Brown's body while marching through the streets. This was shocking. 
In late February, it was cold. It was raining and snowing. Grant waited for the roads to dry. In February, there was a flight from Richmond to North Carolina. On March 4th, President Lincoln reviewed the second company of black soldiers who marched in a parade with the, with the motto, with malice towards none, with charity for all. On March 5th, there was news that Phil Sheridan had defeated Jubal Early near Charlottesville. The Shenandoah Valley was now free from the Confederate Army. He, then he headed for Richmond with 2,000 black soldiers. In mid-March, the southern, southern war machine was winding down. The people were weary and disillusioned. March 11th, Sherman took Fayetteville, North Carolina. There, were a huge crowd, there was a huge crowd of ex-slaves. President Lincoln was sick. Grant suggested a trip to City Point, Virginia. And, and Lincoln accepted it and visited Grant at City Point. Lincoln became cheerful and boyish. March 25th, Robert E. Lee lost a Confederate offensive. He attacked Fort Stedman, Virginia, and failed. There were 5,000 Confederate losses, and the war was nearing its end. President Lincoln saw Confederate prisoners march by, and he was sympathetic. President Lincoln said that the United States had just enough virtue to, to survive. On March 29th, Grant tra- transferred to Gravelry, Gravelry Run in the Appomattox campaign. March 28th, Grant's final campaigns southwest of Petersburg. April 1st at Five Forks was a blow from which Lee never recovered, a Union victory. Lee needed to abandon Petersburg and Richmond. The Union t- troops attacked Petersburg. There were 12,000 Confederate prisoners taken. Robert E. Lee sent a telegram to Jefferson Davis to abandon Richmond, which Davis received in church. The, the Confederate president became pale and bolted from the church. There was pandemonium in Richmond. March was the fall of Richmond. The Confederates burned the c- cotton and tobacco. A fire spread throughout the whole city. Sally Pickett, the wife of Confederate General George Pickett, was a resident of Richmond and recorded, quote, Throughout the night, the fire raged. The sea of darkness rolled over the town. The crowds of men, women, and children went about the streets, laden with what plunder they could rescue from the flames. The drunken rabble shattered the plate glass windows of the stores and wrecked everything upon which they could seize. The populace had become a frenzied mob, and the kingdom of Satan seemed to have been transferred to the streets of Richmond. At the Richmond train station, gold and the archives were put on a train to Danville. The fall of Petersburg and Richmond brought joy in the north. On April 3rd, Grant was in Petersburg. The town council surrendered. The Confederate army escaped on the bridge, on a bridge over the Appomattox River. Grant did not fire his artillery. He did not want to slaughter Lee in his flight, his flight and search for food. April 7th, Grant decided to propose to Lee to to surrender. He sent a letter that it was hopeless and he did not want more death. Lee received the message at 10 p.m. Lee believed the war was not hopeless and he was not ready to surrender. Lee wrote to Grant asking for terms of surrender. Grant wrote that the one condition was that the men and officers who surrendered would be disqualified for fighting again. Peace was near. Rutherford B. Hayes, future president, was excited and happy that Grant was gaining victory. Grant was worried that Lee would take his army of northern Virginia to a haven in the Virginia-Tennessee mountains. Grant was under a tremendous stress. He had a big headache. His remedy was to soak his feet in hot water with mustard and put mustard plasters on his wrists and neck. Grant received the answer from, an answer from Lee. Rollins was upset. Grant said no. He said, quote, Lee is only trying to be let down easy. Grant rejected Lee's proposal of a meeting. He encouraged surrender to save thousands of lives. Lee's army was surrounded by Grant's army. Resistance was futile. Lee's response, he requested a meeting to discuss terms of surrender. Grant's headache disappeared immediately. Sheridan was disappointed and said, quote, Damn them, I wish they had held out an hour longer, and I would have whipped hell out of them. Grant and Lee met at Appomattox Courthouse. 
Lee arrived first. It was a brick house owned by Wilmer McLean, who owned a house at Bull Run. He witnessed the beginning of the Civil War in his backyard and the, and the end in his parlor. Grant arrived in mud-caked clothes. He was detached from his headquarters wagon. He was aware of how poorly dressed he was, but it was not intentional. Ron Chernow wrote, quote, regarding Lee, Grant and Lee at Appomattox, or Lee at Appomattox, quote, There was a Roman se- severity, a patrician air of rectitude about Robert E. Lee and at Appomattox Courthouse. He was determined to look the victor, even if he could not be one. Traveler Lee's horse munched grass outside while Grant and Lee met. Grant was sad he did not rejoice in the defeat of a foe who had fought long and valiantly and had suffered. Lee found socializing unendurable in the early part of their meeting. He he resisted a show of camaraderie. He was concerned about the exact terms of, of surrender. Grant said that the Army of Northern Virginia, its officers and men, would be paroled and disqualified from taking arms. All arms and ammunition and supplies needed to be turned over. Grant started, his, started to transform from the scourge of the South to its champion. The terms, in the terms, there was not, not a tinge of malice. The, the Army of Northern Virginia was, Virginia was hungry. Grant offered to provide 25,000 rations for the hungry Confederate soldiers. At Appomattox, Union Major General Joshua K- Chamberlain was involved in the sur- surrender of the Confederates when they laid down their arms. The Union soldiers presented arms and saluted the gallant foes. A Lee soldier wrote, quote, Many grizzled veterans wept like women, and my own eyes were as blind as my voice was dumb. Grant was compassionate for the Confederate soldiers. When Lee departed on his horse traveler, Grant and other Union officers lifted their hats in homage, and Lee tipped his hat. Grant said, quote, It's all over, boys. Lee surrendered. It's all over. However, Grant stopped the celebration. There was stunned silence. Grant was courteous. He hoped for national reconciliation. Grant, at 4.30 p.m., wrote a letter sent a letter to Secretary Stanton that Lee had surrendered. Grant never forgot that the enemy in the Civil War were fellow Americans, so at at Appomattox he was generous and accommodating. On April 10th, Grant met Lee for a second time. Grant hoped Lee would encourage other Confederate generals to surrender. Lee wanted the South back in the Union. The Army of Northern Virginia dispersed peacefully. The The men went home with government transportation and military railroads. Grant did not visit Richmond, and he said, quote, They're feeling their defeat bitterly, and I would not add to it by witnessing their despair. The New York Times wrote, quote, If a great soldier is indomitable in purpose and exhaustless in courage, endurance, and equanimity, if he is free from vanity and pettiness, if he is unpretentious, truthful, frank, constant, generous to friends, magnanimous to foes and patriotic to the core. Of him it will be said, he is like Ulysses S. Grant. More than 20% of the Southern adult male population died in the Civil War. Grant said that it was hard to believe that such a terrible war had been fought in a Christian country in a civilized age. Lee was grateful for Grant's behavior at Appomattox. On April 13th, Grant and Julia were in Washington, D.C., His job was to dismantle the army. Since the war was over, Washington, D.C. was grandly lit, honoring Lee's the surrender of Robert E. Lee and the fall of Mobile, Alabama. April 14th was Good Friday. General Robert Anderson raised the American flag in Charleston, South Carolina, the four-year anniversary of the fall of Fort Sumter. Granted, at 11 a.m. was an honored guest at President Lincoln's cabinet meeting. And he was asked about the the Appomattox surrender terms. Grant said, quote, I told them to go back to their homes and families, and they would not be molested if they did nothing more. President Lincoln did not want to persecute the South. Grant and Julia did not go with Abraham Lincoln and his wife Mary to Ford's Theater. They'd been invited for that evening. Julia disliked Mary. Grant and Julie took a train to Burlington, New Jersey, to see their children. 
They stopped in Philadelphia and received the news that President Lincoln had been shot and was dead. It was the most painful day of Grant's life. This was a crisis, and pressure was on him. Grant regretted that he didn't go to Ford's Theater and return to Washington, D.C. At the White House, hundreds of freed slaves were weeping. President Lincoln was dead, and the responsibility for the, for the Union and justice for freed, the freed slaves was, was borne by General Grant. On April 19th, Lincoln's body was at the White House, and Grant stood guard. Tears poured down his cheeks. Grant said about Abraham Lincoln, quote, His fame will grow brighter as time passes, and his great work is better understood. The U.S. was in national mourning for the death of President Lincoln. It was more, more than there had been for the death of George Washington, because Lincoln was in office, and he had almost his full second term to serve. Confederate President Jefferson Davis wanted to continue the war. Joe Johnston said to Davis, quote, My views are, sir, that our people are tired of the war, feel themselves whipped, and will not fight. On April 17th, Sherman met Johnston in North Carolina. Sherman was overly lenient. The Confederates were allowed to keep their arms to stack in their state capitals. The existing state governments would be recognized and the right of property and possibly even slavery respected. Sherman had blundered. Grant departed for Raleigh, North Carolina to meet Sherman. Stanton had a vendetta against Sherman and publicly condemned his actions. Grant was appalled. Grant said that Stanton was cruel to Sherman. Grant said to Sherman that he needed to offer the same terms to Johnston that he had offered to Lee, and, and, and Sherman agreed. Grant forgave Sherman for his mistake. He was upset with Stanton for his condemnation of Sherman. Johnston surrendered and the war was over. On May 10th, Jefferson Davis was captured in Georgia. May 10th was the trial of the defendants, the eight defendants, and the murder of Abraham Lincoln. It was, it was a medieval barbaric trial. They had linen masks shielding their faces and had heavy iron balls strapped to their ankles. May 23rd was, was the march of Union armies in Washington, D.C., celebration for victory in the Civil War. General Meade and Sherman and 200,000 soldiers marched. Grant was there. Uh, the soldiers said, Grant, Grant, goodbye, old man. It was a six-hour march. Hard-earned victory. There was a carpet of flower petals. The Grand Review in Washington, D.C. Sherman's soldiers refused new uniforms, and one soldier said, quote, Let them see us the way we are, clean weapons and bare feet. Let them look at us in our rags. They'll, they'll know who we are. We're Uncle Billy's men. They don't have to cheer. It's our last march, and we're going to do it our way. Historian Jar Charles Braceland Flood wrote about the Civil War, quote, The soldiers of the eastern states had done their full share in winning the war, but it, it was this new dimension, the political and military power of the West, that had welded itself to the older eastern states in the great national crisis. And together, these regions and their forces had won the war. At the Grand Review, there was a banner that wrote, quote, The only national debt we can never repay is the debt we owe to the victorious Union soldiers. At the Grand Review, songs that were sung included the Battle Hymn of the Republic and When Johnny Comes Marching Home. The parade included George Armstrong Custer. On day two, the Western Army marched. Grant dreamed of living in Philadelphia and commuting to Washington, D.C. He had received the, a gift of, of the Philadelphia home, but it was too far away, not practical, so he rented out that house. Grant took a streetcar in Washington, Washington D.C. to work, or he walked. Julie enjoyed life in Washington. She was affectionate, motherly, and popular. Grant's challenge was to reconcile the, with the South and protect the rights of the four million former slaves or freedmen, the, the black Americans. It was a Herculean task. There was a campaign in the northern press to, to arrest Robert E. Lee for treason. Grant wanted amnesty and mercy for Lee. A Norfolk, Virginia grand jury indicted Lee, Joe Johnston, James Longstreet, and other Confederate general, generals. Grant opposed this, 
and viola- it violated the Appomattox Agreement. Grant threatened to resign. President Johnson asked Attorney General James Speed to order the U.S. Attorney in Norfolk to abandon prosec- the prosecution of Lee and others. So, he, And he agreed to do that. So you see that um, Ulysses S. Grant saved Robert E. Lee from prosecution. Lee's, Robert, e. Lee's, Robert E. Lee's citizenship was restored in 1975. The news spread that Grant had saved Lee. Grant's status was he was forgiving and merciful. Confederate General John Singleton Mosby, his freedom of movement was restricted and he was unable to earn a living as a lawyer. His wife met with Grant and, and asked him for help and Grant issued a safe conduct order and Mosby was allowed to work. In 1862, France, the French army under Napoleon III, had invaded and occupied Mexico purportedly to collect their debts, and they overthrew the government of Benito Juarez and installed an Austrian Archduke Ferdinand Maximilian as, as ruler of Mexico. There was, there was possible that the French would invade the United States from Mexico. Napoleon III supported the Confederates with supplies and sanctuary. May 17, 1865, Grant sent Phil Sheridan and 50,000 troops to pacify Texas and Louisiana. Grant and Sheridan wanted the downfall of Maximilian and the French out of Mexico. Grant wanted war with France in Mexico to unite the, the North and South. On June 30th, the news came that the Confederates sacked the federal arsenals and hauled artillery into Mexico. 2,000 Confederate soldiers went to Mexico, including Jubal Early, Kirby Smith, three governors from the South, and Confederate cabinet members. Mexico, Grant wanted to topple the French dictator Maximilian and restore Benito Juarez, the duly elected president. Sheridan gave Juarez 60,000 rifles. In 1866, the French withdrew, Maximilian fell, and Juarez was restored. On June 16th at a cabinet meeting, Grant wanted to confront Maximilian. Seward did not want war with France. He believed that Maximilian was on his way out. On June 8th, Grant attended the commencement at West Point. He was embraced by Winfield Scott. Scott gave Grant a copy of his memoirs and inscribed, quote, from the oldest to the greatest general of the Army of the United States. July 24, from July 24th to October 6th, Grant and Julia and their children went on a tour of the East and Midwest. It was difficult. Too many people wanted to see him and shake his hand. It was draining. Grant did not enjoy public speaking. At the Chicago Fair, fair, his hands became so swollen that he couldn't shake any more hands. In Galena, Illinois, he was given a big welcome. Five years earlier, he had arrived in shame and misery. Grant did not want to live in Galena. He once said that he, he wanted to be mayor of Galena to put, a, put in a sidewalk in his home to the train station. There was a big sign that said, quote, General, the sidewalk is built. He was given a home in Galena, and folks hoped that Grant would live there, and this would help the town. Grant was embarrassed and wished he'd been given generosity when he needed it. He avoided the leather goods store. His father put an ad in the newspaper that said, quote, since Grant has whipped the rebel Lee and opened trade from sea to sea, our price in goods must soon advance. Then don't neglect the present chance to call on Grant and Perkins, J.R.G. Grant took a trip to St. Louis, another scene of his dismal failure. In Galena, his mother uh, did not want Grant spoiled by idolatry and said, quote, Well, Ulysses, you've become, a, you've become a great man, haven't you? Then she returned to her chores without a show of maternal warmth. Pretty sad. Grant returned to Washington, D.C. His job was to reorganize the Army for peacetime. He believed there was a need for 80,000 troops in the South. There were unsettled questions about the relationship of black and white people in the South. John Rawlins, his personal assistant, continued to help. Grant traveled to Washington, New York City and spent 10 days there. He, there was a reception for him at the Fifth Avenue Hotel. He was flanked by Joe Hooker, William B. Astor, Winfield Scott, John C. Fremont, and Ambrose Burnside. 
There were 3,000 guests. And they ate oysters, drank champagne, and there were fireworks. Grant was drawn into the debate about Reconstruction. In other words, how would the South rejoin the Union? March of 1865, the federal government assumed responsibility to, responsibility to aid the freed slaves and formed the Freedmen's Bureau to provide food, clothing, education, and medical care and relocation on 850,000 acres of land that the government had taken control of in the South during the war. Charles O. Howard was head of the Freedmen's Bureau and later helped found Howard University. On August 16th, President Johnson issued an order returning the land to owners in the South, which had been confiscated. This was popular with whites who had lost land, but disappointed bl blacks who were hoping for 40 acres and a mule, and instead became landless sharecroppers. By the end of 1865, black codes had been enacted in the South. This meant segregation. Blacks would be arrested if they left the job before their annual contract expired. It was a new form of bondage. The Ch Jim Crow system was being built in the South. In South Carolina, blacks were confined to, to their plantation and forced to work from sunup to sundown. In Mississippi, it was a crime for blacks to hunt and fish. Summer of 1865, President Johnson sent Carl Schurz, Schurz South to report on the status of people in the South and Reconstruction. Schurz reported that the blacks in the South were living in wretched poverty, and with the black coats, they had no freedom. Johnson did not like Schur's report, so, he, so in November he sent Grant South to report. November 27th, Grant headed south for a two-week trip, and he proceeded to give a positive report, which he later regretted. He realized he was wrong. Grant believed that the blacks in the south needed military protection. Carpetbaggers were northerners who went south to make money and help blacks. There was violence against carpetbaggers. Scalawags were Southerners who supported Reconstruction. They were also persecuted. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. I'll see you next time.